stop to call in every single drag and drop flow and AN as an AI agent. You have to understand the difference between an AI agent and automation. And um, if you don't know the difference, two things will happen. No. First of all, your project blows up in cost because you will use AI agent when a simple automation or AI automation can handle the problem. That is super simple. Everyone use the AI agent node when only a predefined step-by-step -step automation can handle the problem much better. Or you will implement a huge AI automation when a simple agent can handle your use case. The second thing that can happen, your AI agent freeze when a real world example happen. In this video, I'm going to teach you four fundamental patterns that you can follow on your AI automation or agents or any kind of workflow. This pattern will save time and money for you. Because once you already know how implemented, you will implement only the necessary stuff to implement. And you will implement those patterns on automation, agents, or a mix of both. But before diving dive into on all this stuff related with the patterns, I'm going to teach you the difference between an AI agent and automation. When use one and when use another one. Starting with the AI agent or agented AI. Here we have two different types of agent, AI, sorry. We have the agent generative AI and agentive AI. Generative AI is to create contents. When you go to ChatGPT and text and create text images or audio and stuff. In this, in this point, there is a human in the loop. You are in the loop, fixing stuff, stuff and providing feedback. But in agentic AI, it's autonomously system to achieve goals, make decisions, and taking action, not just generating content. Understanding that, we can start with the automation. The automation is not something new. The automation has been implementing on software the last 20 years, even more. But now with tools such as NAN, we can use AI in those automations. That's mean even when it's an automation, when it's a pre setup, pre configuration, the step by step, we can implement AI in one of the steps. Let me give you a quickly example of, of AI automation. For example, here we have automation to create vectors to a rack system, right? It is not an AI agent because it's a predefined step by step where there is a trigger, there is a actions, there is a couple of action. Even you can add some conditional. If you want to handle the error, you can set up as well, or you have to program it. Everything in AI automation or AI automation, you have to set up all the decision, all the path you will have to set up the error and the edge cases, etc. But what's happened with the AI agents? The AI agents, we have, to understand what is the AI agent, we have to break it down the world. Agents and AI. Agents are autonomous systems can make decisions, take actions based on the environment. And when we use AI, we empower those AI, uh, those agents using LLMs. Let me give you an example as well. It's an agent because using the tools make action, right? Has a memory. In this case, it doesn't have a memory, but can provide a memory as well and is empowered with a chat model. This is now the AI agent and this node is autonomous system that based on the input can and the prompt that we set up can make and take can make a decision over what will be the tool to use. Cool. 
don't worry about those resources because this is on my GitHub. If you want to read that, let me know in the comments and I will share with you the link. But let's see the comparison between AI agent and AI automation. Starting with the execution flow. It's predefined. When you have automation, you define all the steps, all the possible paths. With an AI agent, you can define until the point that where you are going to use the agent. In this point is the agent will decide what will be the best action. What does that mean? If we take a look here, I can here define based on this conditional what will be the path. But when the AI agent start to work, it's the agent who decide here uh, decision making. And this point is totally different because as I told you, the agent is autonomous and the automation is pretty fine. Another important stuff here, learning and memory. Usually the agents can have memory and learning by himself, can use a uh, store context, um, call the previous steps and learn from the previous experience. That is not something that the automations can do because the automation execute only one. Even in environments uh, similar to N8N, when you execute one, one action, one, there is only one execution. There is a memory to record the previous one and this way keep track of what happened before. And error handling in this point is a static. If something was unexpected, the automation is usually stop or through error. That's why you have to think about it. What is the, what are the edge cases and what will be the possible error? And the AI agents can handle the, those errors. Maybe execute an action when it failed or retrying again or try to achieve the goal even when there is an error in the middle. Now let's see something. When use each of the solution. Here we have in this table, when use a traditional automation, well defined and repetitive task. Super use when you have a well defined such as you receive a daily a daily mail and you want to execute a couple action with those information. This is a typical workflow for AI automation. They are so accurate because we have the control and also when the sources of time is a limitation. It's completed through the AI agent will be expensive than any uh, any automation or any AI uh, automation. And the time to develop a uh, automation will be uh, faster than develop a uh, AI uh, agent. For another stuff, the stuff we have a complex open end problems, real time adaptability and personalization. Even when we want to the agent learn the previous errors or the previous response, all those case, all use cases will be much better use a AI agent. Think about it and this example again. This is a well-defined and repetitive task because when I add a file here in this folder, this workflow execute and convert the new file in vectors. It's not near an AI agent here. But here, this is an AI agent that is running on my website when somebody complete my form via action and based on the input, the AI agent will read those resources and create a PDF. And if needed, will send a tailored email to the user. That is depend on what is the input. Now let's take a look at the different patterns to follow. If you learn those four patterns, you can implement those 
in any use cases. And even you can mix them, depend on your necessities. Let's start with a chain chain request. This is a simple pattern where you join a nodes in this case and execute action while one by one. In this case, in this case is simple because uh, the execution is start with a click. But let's say we are listening with a trigger. We are watching a uh, Google Sheets and we execute this step by step until complete the possible path. Even we can add some conditional here to define different path and execute different node nodes for each of the patch, the path, sorry. But is in the end of the day, I pre defining step by step. And the second one is a single agent. It's common to chats or at least for simple chats. These agents usually has tools, memory is super important here, the memory because the memory track of the previous message will use a open AI model and based on the input, the agent will decide what will be the action to make, right? As we can see here, we are using an open AI model based on an AI agent. And here we are using as well an AI, right? But here is an automation because here we don't have memory and I haven't assigned tools. In this point, this only is creating a categorization. Well, then the next one is the multi-agent with gatekeeper. This pattern is the evolution of the previous one for more context on multi-phase cases where the simple general agent may be sufficient or inefficient. And that's why use another agents in the hierarchy. Let's see this example. We have this agent that is like at the boss and decide what will be the agent to use as a tool has external or another agent. In this case, will be a content creator agents but at the same time can have a analysis creator agent as well. And depend on the input, the agent will decide what will be the agent the best agent or the best agents to use for this task. Could it be a nested simple agents, but something that you can know here is you can have this pattern as well. Something like switch. You can have a switch, right? With several paths. And if each of the path reference an agent, right? It's, it's going to be similar and you can implement an agent in previous steps, something like this. Based on the response of this agent, we'll decide what will be the next agent. And here we have the next pattern, multi-agent things. Here I have to say something. When we are working with N8N, there is not a multi-agent in self because the multi-agents are agents that have the same memory and they are maybe they can compete or work together in one task and here on a and n in this kind of the multi-agent things we just breaking down the task because once a task is given this what hood is the input and each of the agent will execute different tasks. It's not a multi-agent itself. It's not working the same task. It's break down a task in different agents, even when they share the same memory. In this point, we can use a single agent for each of them or could it be a gatekeeper as well. This is the combination of the old 
pat the previous pattern. But something that you can understand as well, you can mix all, the, all of them. You can start with a simple automation and in one point, or depend on any condition, you can execute a AI agent. And this will be a myth of both. That is basically the power of NAM. To summarize, understand the difference between the AI agent automation is just to save time and money because you will use the accurate solution for the problem. Most of the time, and I swear, most of the time you just need a automation or maybe automation empowered with AI. There are a lot of use cases where you need an autonomous system taking decisions such as a chatbot. If you want to understand much better about those difference and dive into all the AI agent world, I have a special mentorship program where I will be your tutor 